Actually, it's a very interesting topic. Youth, peace. Um, Dr. Jisnaw spoke about violence. I think I'll go more towards the peace and security side. Um, and I know Varsha is putting me on a time leash because I came late. So I will make sure I stick to time. Now, instead of violence, let's look at the peace side of it. And instead of at the peace side of it, let's look at the security side of it. Now, when we talk about security, most of you all start looking at how to lock my doors. How many gates must I have? How many locks must I have in my gates? Okay? For a human being, the most important security is here. Your stomach. Food security. A lot of us don't understand food security. Number two, energy security so with food comes water security food and water security is usually the the, the most uh, important one the second one is energy security these two things need to be looked at i got no slides so you all can look all you all one up there just listen to me how many of you all are sleepy three o'clock in the afternoon you know i i usually fall asleep very fast so if i ah, so at least one person admitted that you're sleepy very good i like you so now what is energy security what is energy security what is food security how does it relate to youth and how does how can y'all play a role in making sure that this is addressed okay i believe security is one part of your whole program so i'm going to address the two things only now when you talk about food security what is food security anyone what is food security have you ever heard of this thing called food security? It's not locking down your brain in your drawer or something, you know. What is food security? Very good. Hunger and famine, okay. Anyone else want to try? I like your statement just now. Ah, sufficient food sufficient basic nutrient to you it must come number one how many of you know how much of nutrition you need in a day no one knows that okay forget it now how many of you know where is your rice coming from where is your vegetable coming from of course i know it's coming from the market but beyond the market where is it coming from where is the chicken coming from? Where is the mutton coming from? Whatsoever, whatever you all had for lunch, where is that coming from? Today, all your food come from farms. Okay, all your food come from farms and these farms are very, very far away from you. They are in the outskirts. Most of them live on very low income most of the families are old families the younger ones like y'all come to the city to find better pay right how many of you have had the basic knowledge of walking in a farm and doing any vegetable gardening when y'all were small how many of you all didn't eat eh? your hands can't come up at all thank you very much Okay, not, not many. You see, the thing is this. How do you bring the farm from the rural area into urban cities? How do you do that? I am, uh, let, me, let me tell you one program that I'm now working with two different universities, in, uh, local universities, Inti and Nilai. I'm already starting off this program. We are looking at urban farming. So what we are doing now is we are working with number one, the chicken farmers, the 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 the, the what do you call the vegetable farmers. We are taking all that and converting into into compost. Now that compost, what we do is we get another group. We ask them to create seedlings. Okay, all these farmers, we give them the compost, put them into small pots. Small pots. Put them into, um, put the seedling inside so that you can get seedlings. Now, these seedlings, what we are doing is, 
we are looking at the walls of any building for now okay you look at the wall now i want you all to listen to this eh? you look at the wall we look at three things number one how many potted plants can you put on a wall one two three all you need is a frame you can frame and you can put your pots inside this frame small pots don't take this huge pot and go and put there of course like you only put one pot small pots put it into frames number one so you have your compost where's your water coming from water ground river hello look at the rain la look at the rain the rain look at rain what we are doing now is we are doing rain water harvesting so when you do your rain water harvesting you collect it in a pot you, you you collect it in a tank you then put the nutrients inside there because these plants need nutrient every day you then create a pumping system i need the engineering guys i need the biotechnologist okay to very good in things and they then start supplying the water they start supplying the 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 the, the whole plant is there now what type of plants how fast does it grow so for now we are only testing with ferns and with flowers okay why because the ferns and the flowers the two legged monkeys won't go and steal you all know the who the two legged monkeys are or not we all la uh, okay hopefully in the future we want to go into vegetable farming okay now the other option is also what we are looking at is to create these pots and get it ready at small seedlings and when this is ready these pots will then be able what we what we are doing with the biotechnology students is to give us a guarantee that you will get two tomatoes per pot three potatoes per pot one carrot per pot or whatsoever so that at the beginning of the week i can sell it to a person for 2 ringgit 3 ringgit at the end of 2 weeks go and collect it back and pay him 10 ringgit for whatever that he has grown now you will say what is all this i will call it making sure you have your vegetables growing on your own balcony to make sure that very city that you live in has enough food to supply you if any crisis breaks out today many if you if you go to today cities you got your apartment you got your shopping complex at the bottom right you got your food stalls at the bottom you don't want to go anywhere but we are very happy with that we got all the clothing and all of that have we ever looked at our own food security so your best place to grow food is all your balconies that's what we are trying to do now we are actually creating a program where we can give you pots with seedlings you go keep it for one week two weeks three three weeks at the end of the two weeks or three weeks we will come and collect it back from you for a certain price and then we go to the market so it's a whole apartment growing maybe tomato another apartment growing potatoes whatever green chili green chili is the easiest to plant now that is one part food security which the youth can look at what we want is we want the youth organizations to come in and run these activities because we need a lot of people we don't only need engineering in terms of collecting the rain water pumping the rain water making sure it's it's distributed to all the plants making all that number one number two we need biotechnologies how to make sure the plants grow fast these are security these are security issues and this is where the youth can come in and when the youth say that see yeah, very often the youth come and say how much is this going to give me 5 bucks 10 bucks no 
organic farming today if you go to uh, any any supermarket you can see the difference between a normal vegetable and organically farmed vegetable the price difference is at least double double and that will assure that you get your food at home now the second security so i hope you all can see a picture of that that is the kind of security that you all can look at and move away from whatever you are doing it's a startup it's a startup economy it's a startup economy you can start it anywhere of course you need some certain certain basic ingredients but now hopefully with the program that we are working with these two universities we are creating that model on how to start up this program number 1 now that is one part of it you look at food security in that same thing you also doing your water security rain water harvesting because in your rain water harvesting you then don't need to depend on any other thing to supply all that water the two securities down there and what the youth need to do is now look at this at your income so youth can actually do farming and farming doesn't need to be done outside town it can be done at your doorstep okay now the third the second the second security that I was talking about energy security how can we look at energy security a lot of us are very dependent on energy the minute the light goes off that's it we all go berserk right so how can we do small projects youth to make sure that you have your energy security in in un they are talking about this food energy and water nexus in un they are discussing about the food energy and water nexus because these are the three basic building blocks for sustenance of human beings not about cities not about anything okay it's a sustenance of us first that only all the cities come in that only everything all that peace that 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 safety and all of that so your security in energy how do you get that what can you do through your basic things that will ensure energy you get you 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 don't secure energy in terms of that but how can you contribute towards and is security Okay, agree, totally agree with you. Um, some of it is a bit far-fledged because the economics of converting that energy back to be distributed is a bit, it's a big question mark. Um, what can you all do at your own house? What can you all do at your own backyard? Now that was what I was looking for. conservation rather than um uh, then rather than production you see the, the the biggest issue today for energy security is if you go to any country they are trying to pump up production rather than reduce consumption of course reducing consumption is the is the is 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 more vulgar than the four letter word itself lah like. um uh, but you got to understand what is reduction of consumption reduction of consumption is very very simple 
reduction of consumption is as simple as offing a light when you are not in the room. Okay, charging your handphones only when you need it and not overnight so that it's fully charged in the morning then the whole morning you can use so energy security comes through that but at the same time energy security can also be done very simple you can look at simple lime and water solutions to generate electricity at home it can be done that i think in india there are uh, backyard lamps which are running on lime and water because of the acidity and all of that so i i know these kind of things are working now energy security does not mean electric city security okay understand these two things energy security is not electric city security electric city security is different energy security is different energy security is also the gas that you need to cook your to cook your food stuff it's also the aircon that you need to cool down yourself it's also the gas that you use in your car all that is energy security so how do you now switch over to a more energy efficient lifestyle rather than a normal lifestyle so when you're going to an energy efficient lifestyle now what we i am now trying to work with another group but so far i've not done it yet is can we measure on a daily basis if i were to cycle to work walk to work okay um reduce reduce the amount of aircon that i use okay while i'm driving i don't use my aircon it reduces my my um fuel consumption how do we calculate all of this okay how much of time do i have another 5 minutes wow i must have really gone through it fast <laughs> okay okay so these are the securities that you all need to look at okay and the security is a bit more vague compared to water and food security food security is more direct to us and food and water security is the most important thing that you all must look at what i would like to see in the youth around here is to go back and look at where you can implement the simple things of doing home gardening home gardening is very very easy all you need is small pots but be very careful in choosing your seedlings because if you choose the wrong seedlings it dies within 3 days believe me the second time you all are not going to do it at all i i i have seen a lot of people who have gone into this first round second round the seedlings die you don't put in enough nutrition and then after 2 weeks ah yeah now only growing this much ah when am i supposed to get my tomato it's it's a, it's a very frustrating cycle that is why we are saying that it needs to be done in a group if you want to do it individually you will lose out but if you do it in a group believe me it will work at the same time look at rainwater harvesting today all the cities are losing rainwater why because the rainwater is going off as storm water and then at the same time the city is complaining the pipe is dry right do you all face the same thing at home water security how many of you all are actually looking at recycling your rain water rain water possible right you want to say something you are recycling your rain water very good so rain water gives you that water security food reprocessing gives you the um food security reducing your consumption in energy gives you the energy security i've covered all the three and three securities the violence part i think doctor has spoken a lot about that like i said i'll talk about the peace part and how you all can actually go towards the security part 
So always remember, security is not about locks and keys. Security is more towards how I can, how I can survive. That's my security. I'll stop at that. Thank you very much.